So as we go through these problems with parametric equations, uh, you're going to be doing three th main things. Uh, you're going to be graphing basically the tracks uh, and giving the direction of the motion on those tracks. And by doing that, it means you're going to find the Cartesian equation with the domain and range. So this is where you really want to start is what's the Cartesian equation. And then we'll go back and graph it and give the direction of motion with that Cartesian equation. And the parametric, of course. All right, so before we even start, I've already got this plugged into Desmos, so we can look and see what it's going to look like, and then we just have to make it match. So I've got my x coordinate plugged in as t squared minus 3, and I've got my g of t plugged in as t plus 2, and we're going from negative 3 to 3. There's my start and finish. So you can already see where it's at at negative 3. So that's where we're starting, so we know we're going to go in this direction. And that's all we're really doing. And so we need to make this graph, which we know is a parabola. So it's going to have a y squared since it's going in this direction. And then as we plug the values in, as our t's get plugged in, it will give us the coordinates and make our object move in that direction. So this is what our first one will look like. And we're starting with a linear function. Right here we have a t plus 2. So one of our will be linear. So we're going to have one equation as linear. And so if you see that linear one, that's the best place to start. So what we're going to do is solve it for t. So we have y equals t plus 2. So now if I bring that 2 over, we get y minus 2 equals t. This allows us to take our x equals t squared minus 3 and plug it in. So x equals... And then now if we just multiply it out, we get x equals, and we already knew it was that y squared, so everything looks good, y squared. And then we would get minus 2y, so minus 4y, plus 4, minus 3. After doing all of those difference quotient squares are not that big of a deal anymore, huh? So y squared minus 4y plus 1, and x equals. And so that should be our graph that we are getting, x equals y squared minus 4y plus 1. Now that x equals y minus 2 squared minus 3 is also a good graph. If you remember, this is just shifting. So we know our y coordinate will be at 2, and our x coordinate will be at negative 3. So it's just the reverse because we're working in that way. So we already know it's going to be at negative 3, 2. Now we can also use a table to graph this. So if we plug in negative 3 and then negative 2, and then negative 1, it's going to give us our graph as well. And I like to just use the calculator to get these values. It's a lot quicker and a lot uh, safer. So we do t squared minus 3. Remember y equals. Make sure your mode is in parametric. And then t plus 2. Go to your table set, and we're starting at negative 3 with a change in 1. And what we're using this for is to also give us a direction. So negative 3 would be 6 and negative 1. And so that would tell us exactly where it's starting. Right over here. And then our next point is 1, 0. And then our next point is negative 2, 1. So if we plug those in, you can already see which direction our graph is going. So it's going that direction. It looks horrible, but you get the idea. And we know that that's our vertex right there. So it's just going to go the other way as well. And so that is our direction. And so there we are. So plugging in the t value as it moves through here, it's plugging in all our x values. So right from the beginning, when you plug in t equals negative 3, we're getting 6, negative 1. That's our first point. And then when we get to negative 2, we're getting 1, 0. And then we get to negative 1 right there. Negative 1 is negative 2, 1. And then, of course, right at t equals 0, we're getting negative 3, 2. And then it continues on. So we are just plotting points, basically, by plugging in t values. And by doing that, it causes motion. It causes our little darlic to move from negative 3, t equals negative 3, to t equals 3. 
So what does that mean? We have our graph. We have our direction, right? And that's going to be also at 6 if I continue. And what we need to now is to find the Cartesian equation. We are done. I like the x equals y minus 2 squared minus 3. So that's done. And then the last one is domain and range on here. And so you can see our range, our domain is from negative 3 to 6. So our x is going to go from negative 3 to 6. And our y value is going to go from 1 all the way up to the top of there. So you can plug it in your calculator and see 3 is 5, or you can just go straight to your y equation. We already know it's going to move in this direction upward, right? So our y is moving up. So it's going to go from whatever it was at negative 3 all the way up to whatever it was at positive 3. So we could just plug negative 3 into our y value and it would tell us our y's. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And then positive 3 plus 2 is 5. So using the calculator, using Desmos, whatever you want. But now we've given the graph, the, the direction. We found the Cartesian equation. And we also found our domain and range for this equation. All right, let's try another. All right, so we have x equals the square root of t and y equals 1 minus t. So if we plug those into Desmos and we hit play, we can see that's our motion. So you already know exactly where it is at 0. And you can see there's nothing. If I go to the negative, there's nothing there because we're dealing with a square root here. Same basic idea. You can't have a negative inside of that radical. It's going to give you imaginary. So we don't get any x and y coordinates until 0. So that is our first point. So we already know the direction is going to go this way. So it's going to start at 0, 1 and work its way down our graph. And our x, our t value has to be greater than 0, which is going to affect the x and the y values. You can also see that our graph here is a square root. So again, we're playing with linear. So we're going to take our y equals 1 minus t, and we're going to solve. So plus t right plus t basically we're just going to switch the y and the t so this would be t equals 1 minus y because we would add the t over and subtract the y over and there's our t so now if we plug that in x equals square root of t so x equals square root of 1 minus y we now have our cartesian equation and so that is our square root it's 1 minus y and then this is our track, and again, these give us the motion. So these are the motion along this track. And so you can see 1 minus y must be greater than or equal to 0. So if I move that y over, we say y has to be less than or equal to 1. So if we were to plug those values in again, we know that our t here, square root of t, this means that t must be greater than or equal to 0. So that's where we're starting, 0, 1, 2. So this is giving us our starting location just by being a radical. So now if I plug 0 in to my radical, I get 0, 1, square root of 2. And if I plug 0 into my y, I get 1, 0, and negative 1. So you can see where our motion is going. We are at 0, 1 right here, and then we are at 1, 0. So you can already see that that is our direction. We are heading down. It's our radical. So our domain here, right, we don't have to write domain, we can just say x. So our x here, we already have the y, y must be less than or equal to 1. And our x, you can see, must be bigger than 0. It states it right here. So because our t is bigger than 0, those are the values we'll be plugging in here, our x would also be greater than or equal to 0. So now we have we have our domain and range, we have our Cartesian equation, we have our graph with direction, and again we can plug these in our calculator to find out what they are and use those, or we can plug them in very easily here. The calculator is very safe. And then I always recommend plugging it in Desmos. You already have these graphs, you can just change them and change them, adjust your start and finish, and hit play. And it will tell you which direction you're going and verify your work. So these are linear substitution. So we're not really doing anything different on any of these problems. It's just the type of problems that we're substituting in. So the next one will be quadratics, and then we'll look at some trig values, and so on.